I'm Veronica Lewis, and today on Let's Go Dutch, we're taking a look at the painters of the Dutch Golden Age. I'm gonna travel the world. I'm gonna go where the Dutch have been. And I'm gonna share it with you, my friends. Let's go Dutch. Let's go Dutch. Let's go Dutch. We'll explore the great Dutch and Flemish masters who have left behind the fruit of an amazing era in the history of painting. We'll explore the cities where they lived and worked and the surroundings from which they drew their inspiration. So put on your clogs and let's go Dutch! Dutch masters. Cigars? I think not. Paint? Nay. Toothpaste, thicker neat, cheese. Mmm, sounds good, uh, but nay. Well, actually, all the above. The Dutch masters were that great. Most people have already heard of many of the Dutch and Flemish masters Rembrandt, Rubens, Vermeer, Van Hoch. Oh, I'm sorry. Van Gogh. Goff for our British friends. Easier to say it in English, right? Van Gogh. Practice that. Van Gogh. Coming out of the Dark Ages and in the early days of Christianity, painters concentrated on religious themes and paintings were generally commissioned by the church and wealthy patrons. Perspective was pretty much non-existent. It was during the Renaissance that painters started to explore perspective and depth. The northern Dutch provinces were mostly Protestant, and because of that, they didn't commission religious themed art. Instead, the flavor of the day was everyday domestic scenes, still life, landscapes, and seascapes. This style came to be known as genre painting. No longer were paintings just for the church and the wealthy. Everyone had paintings and they favored the cozy genre paintings as well as portraits. No world-class museum would be complete without a collection of Dutch and Flemish paintings. The fruits of the golden age are spread out in museums and private collections around the world. Some of the museums we'll be traveling to today are in the Netherlands and some right here in New York City, such as the Met, the Metropolitan Museum, with its permanent collection of Dutch and Flemish masters. As the former Dutch colony of New Amsterdam, it's only fitting that New York would have a great collection of Golden Age artists. The Met opened in 1880, but the original building was expanded upon through the decades. This neoclassical facade on Museum Mile was added in 1902. Unlike the Frick Collection, the Met was not previously a mansion of the Gilded Age, but conceived and built as a public palace of art treasures. Oh, and one more thing. While you're there, be sure to check out the rest of their collection. They have all the Impressionist masters as well. Remois, Monet, Caravaggio. It's amazing! Also in New York City, the Frick Collection. Amongst the treasures here are three practic vermeers. Housed in the mansion of Henry Clay Frick, this one's private collection sparkles in the opulence of New York's industrial age. The building behind me is the Rijksmuseum. You cannot leave Amsterdam without stopping here. The Rijksmuseum is Amsterdam's national museum, built in 1885. The front facade is decorated with reliefs of the Golden Age artists. The building itself is a work of art, so be sure to take the time to appreciate it before heading in. Right behind the Rex Museum is another museum devoted entirely to that other really famous Dutch painter. Hmm, what's his name? That's right, Van Gogh! Den 
Hach is another city with an assortment of museums to choose from. The most spectacular of all is the Moritz House. The house was built for Johann Moritz, Prince of Nassau and Governor of Dutch Brazil. His uncle was none other than Willem the Silent. In 1822, the house became the Royal Cabinet of Paintings. Before we start looking at painters and paintings, let's first talk about the difference between the Dutch and Flemish painters. Flemish refers to Flanders, the Dutch-speaking northern half of Belgium. Now, before there was a Belgium or the Netherlands, they were known as the Low Countries, and their history is quite connected up until 1830 when the Kingdom of Belgium was established. The Flemish painters hailed from cities like Antwerp, Ghent, and Bruges. Some of them fled to the Netherlands during the Spanish Inquisition. The first painting I want to show you was done prior to the later Golden Age. This time period is known as Flemish Primitiva. It sounds primitive, but that's because there's a Gothic undertone to many of the paintings from this time period. Housed in the St. Bavo Cathedral in Ghent and finished in 1432, this is the famous Ghent altarpiece by Jan van Eyck, known as the Lamb of God. This politic took two years to paint. The commission was actually Jan's older brother and he designed it, but he died and Jan finished it. Van Eyck was born in Bruges in 1370. In 1425, Jan became the court painter for Duke Philip the Good. It was the baptism of Philip's son when the Ghent altarpiece was unveiled. Another artist working in Bruges was Hans Memling. Hans was born in the Rhine region of Germany and moved to Bruges in 1465. Can you blame him? Bruges is just, ah. Oh. He had apprenticed in the Netherlands and continued in the footsteps of Van Eyck. In fact, the Memling statue on the Woonstock marked is just a few hundred footsteps away from Von Eyck Plain in Bruges. Hieronymus von Aachen was a local artist in the Dutch town of Sehert Ochenbos. In 1468, at the age of 18, he took the name of his hometown, then Bos, and became known as Hieronymus Bos. He painted primarily on wood, and most of his paintings are triptychs with religious themes. This early work foreshadows the creatures that will one day populate his paintings. Perhaps growing up in the shadow of the Den Bosch Cathedral, with its angels and gargoyles peering down, seeped into his work. When it comes to Europe, you never know where you'll find art treasures. In the Peterskirk in Leiden, you turn a corner and all of a sudden, The Last Judgment, the famous 1527 triptych by Lucas van Leiden. If there's one painter that defines the Flemish city of Antwerp, it's Peter Paul Rubens. PPR, as he's known in the hood, bought this house in 1610. Known as the Rubens House Museum, it's a great place to see where he lived and worked. A few blocks away is the Anseliva Frau Cathedral, and they have four Rubens inside. Antwerp's cathedral took 168 years to build, finishing in 1520. Religion was a common theme for Rubens. While the northern Dutch provinces became Calvinist Protestant, Rubens, along with Antwerp, was allegiant to Catholic Spain. Rubens believed firmly in the Counter-Reformation. Also from Antwerp and a student of Rubens, Anton van Dijk. In 1618, van Dijk was 19 years old. That year, he was admitted to Antwerp's Guild of St. Luke and became Rubens' main assistant. Amongst other things, he's very well known for his portraits. In fact, the goatee beard seen in his portraits became known as a Van Dyck.
Once upon a time, like specifically 1585, a Flemish family from Antwerp packed up their son Franz and moved to Harlem. Young Franz went on to become a portrait painter, and he must have been pretty good because he now has a museum to call his own, the Franz Halls Museum. How about that? Franz was a member of the Harlem Guild of St. Luke, having joined in 1610 when he was 30. One characteristic of a Franz Hall's painting are visible brush strokes. This was not done before him, and he laid the foundation for Van Gogh 250 years later. The 17th century exploded in terms of painters and the works they produced. Early pioneers included Hendrik Overkamp, who specialized in winter landscapes. Check out this painting. Peter Sanradam painted this in 1665. It's the interior of the St. Lawrence Kirk in Akmar. Being a Protestant church, it's mostly whitewashed and bare. But take a look there. I guess it wasn't all whitewashed. This Mary Fiddler was painted in 1623 by Gerard von Honthorst. He hailed from Utrecht. Here we have an assortment of fine examples of the genre period. Here's a painting from 1638. It's Princess Moritz and Hendrik at the Pardon Mark. Pard is the Dutch word for horse. The Pardon Mark is where you went to buy horses. Hailing from Rotterdam and working out of Delft, Peter de Hoch, another master practitioner of domestic scenes. His paintings date from around the 1650s. He is stylistically quite similar to Vermeer. We'll come back to Vermeer in a ver minute. De Hoch is one of my favorites. He apprenticed first in his hometown of Rotterdam and later in Harlem. He joined the Delft Artists Guild in 1655. To make ends meet, he had a side job as a cloth merchant. Perhaps that explains the colorful women's garments in his paintings. Another star of the Golden Age, Jan Steen. Born in Leiden in 1626, he lived in Harlem, Delft, and eventually moved back to Leiden. In 1648, he founded the Painters Guild of St. Luke, along with Gabriel Metsu. His family owned a brew pub, which explains why Jan is so good at tavern scenes. He died in 1679 and is buried in Leiden St. Peter's Kerk. Before we talk about the next artist, I think a word of the day is in order. The word today is skilder. It means painter. A painting is called a skilderay, or plural, skilderayan. The next artist established the Leiden School of Fain Skilders. That means fine painters. And one look at this painting by Garrett Dow, and you'll understand what that means. Early on, Dow was a pupil of Rembrandt, but you can see he ventured off into a whole other thing. His detail is so fain, he had to make his own brushes. This musical party was painted in 1659 by Gabriel Metsu. He came from Leiden and, like Rembrandt, moved to Amsterdam. He's a student of Gerrit Dow and is amongst the Leiden Fane Skilders. These are by Nicolas Mace, a painter from Dordrecht. He was in Amsterdam in 1648 as an apprentice to Rembrandt and picked up much of the master's use of color and shadow. Lace making was a favorite subject during his genre period. When one mentions Dutch masters, there's usually one name that pops up first, Rembrandt. He was born in 1606 in the town of Leiden. Although he later moved to Amsterdam, Rembrandt, perhaps the most famous Dutch painter besides Van Gogh, grew up here in Leiden. In fact, 
he came to study painting in this step gable house. Could that be Rembrandt? Nay, 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 it's just Billy Eric. Billy Eric, what do you, dar? I'm just brushing up on my Leyden history. Outstaken. That's going to come in handy. The reign of Rembrandt Harmazon von Rein lasted from about 1626 to 1669. There is no mistake in a Rembrandt portrait, such as the Stahl Maesters, painted in 1662. This masterpiece, painted in 1632, is the anatomy lesson of Dr. Tulp. It's these skilled arrayan that define the image of Holland's Golden Age merchant class. Rembrandt was also fond of self-portraits. And now we come to the biggest masterpiece of them all, the Nachtwacht from 1642. Here's what separates Rembrandt's night watch from the other portraits of the day. Instead of posed subjects looking all noble in their regalia, Rembrandt painted movement. The company is assembled and heading out. Originally, it was hung in the Cloveniers Dawn, which was the guild house and practice range of Amsterdam's musketeers. Because of the painting's shadows and also a dark varnish it used to have, it was mistaken for a night painting. It's where the name Night Watch comes from. To Rembrandt, it was simply the company of Captain Franz Bonningcock and Lieutenant Willem from Rautenbach. When you see it in person, look real hard at the hand shadow on the yellow uniform of von Rautenbach. Between the fingers, you'll see the three St. Andrew's crosses of Amsterdam's coat of arms. In addition to painting, Rembrandt was a master at etching. A visit to Rembrandt's house in Amsterdam helps to further paint the portrait of the artist and his engraving techniques. Born in the town of Delft in 1632, we have the best of the genre painters, Vermeer. This plaque is saying, on this spot a long time ago that Johannes Vermeer lived right here. Vermeer lived on the Mark, the main square. Not only that, but he moved from one side to the other. Here Vermeer, there Vermeer. What makes a Vermeer? Light. Vermeer is all about light and how it falls on the subject and surroundings. There's a softness to his brushwork, which I find adds warmth to his paintings. The Milkmaid, perhaps the most famous Vermeer, besides, of course, that girl with the pearl. It's the Milkmaid that defines the light and color that makes a Vermeer shine above the rest. This painting is called The Little Street. Willem, since Vermeer is your personal favorite, I'll let you talk about this painting. Yeah, this is one of my favorite Vermeers. I like cityscapes, or stadscapes as it would be in Dutch, and this one is prachtig. The bricks are amazing. They look aged, and the shutters too. See how they look like weathered wood? It looks like an old photo of daily life. The View of Delft. For me, the best Vermeer. So come in near. Look at that detail. The city walls and buildings are so realistic. You can see the faint sparkles of white on the bricks, making them shine. His clouds are so soft and natural. One thing I like about the Golden Age Stadscapes is that you get to see how the city looked at that time. But you also get to see how much still exists. The Ostport and the bridge still exist, and the Torlach, the Neokirk Spire. You don't always have to go to the major city museums to uncover Golden Age masterpieces. Treasures can be found in even the smaller towns. We're heading to Akmar and the collection of the Stedelijk Museum. Akmar.
Lakmar Stedelijk Museum, located close to the train station, features an assortment of Golden Age paintings, including unknown artists on the local scene. In 1573, Akmar was besieged by the Spanish. Here is a 1603 depiction of the Belechering von Akmar. There is an earlier painting of the same theme, painted in 1580 by Peter Andrians Clout. Hendrik Vroom painted this view of Akmar in 1638. Although the artist is unknown, the subject matter isn't. It's the return of the Dutch fleet from Batavia, dating from 1674. Batavia is present-day Indonesia. Here's a 1660 depiction of the Akmar Vach. It pretty much looks the same today. Another charming little town worth exploring is Hauda, located in the South Holland province. This is called the Lazarus Gate. It's made of sandstone and goes back to 1609. It leads into the Katerina Hasthaus, which is a 14th century hospital. It's now called the Stedelijk Museum. So let's Stedelijk on in. It's quite cool, really. Stedelijk, our municipal museum, sits right behind the St. Jan's Kerk. In fact, the street is called Achter de Kerk, which means behind the church street. The museum has period rooms, paintings, and local pottery known as Haus Patel. The basement is downright medieval, and they have a fine collection of civic guard portraits. Oh, and they have a piano, too. Just a word about our good friend Vincent. Ah, uh, you're probably thinking, isn't he a Dutch master? Well, he is Dutch, and we can all agree, he is a master. But he was born 200 years after the Dutch masters, so not a part of the Golden Age. But we'll show you some of his early works. The Van Gogh Museum in Amsterdam has a great variety of paintings from Vinnie's various periods. Let's have a look at two of his darker, lesser known works. This is the Potato Peeler, and it comes from the same period as the Potato Eater's painting. It's quite dark, and a far cry from the brightness and color of his later works. There's one more painter outside of the Golden Age that I want to show you. For that, we go to Den Haag, the Panorama Mesdok. It's basically just one painting. One painting, you say? I say. Hendrik Willem Mesdok was known primarily as a seascape painter. The view is of Scheveningen, and the illusion is helped along by real sand and props. It really takes your breath away when you first enter the pavilion. In 1881, Mesdok entered a competition. He completed this painting in four months with the help of his wife and two assistants. The scale is immense, and Mesdok had a track built for the scaffold to move around. The painting was done on numbered squares, as these unfinished parts show. Whether you're having a cigar, some cheese, brushing your teeth, or even brushing paint on canvas, the Dutch Golden Age illuminated the way for many generations to come. Did you know the Dutch painters were among the first to use oil? The Italians were using tempera, but started using oils after seeing what the Dutch were doing. 
When you go into a paint shop, you'll see paints named Rembrandt, Van Gogh, Old Holland, and colors like Van Dyke Brown and Antwerp Blue. Could be the next Rembrandt or Vermeer is you. Well, that's all the time we have. Join us again next time on Let's Go Dutch as we explore more of Holland and beyond. Tutsings!